I worked with murderers, rapists, and pedophiles. I left the police because I couldn't be part of the force anymore. There was a senior officer. He was later convicted for a double murder. What? Were you really not aware? Like, no. you, did you genuinely have no idea? So f I remember one officer went to a suicide. It was someone who hanged themselves and they took a selfie. Are you joking? Mm. Oh my goodness. Were you ever offered anything like drink or drugs or anything like that by other officers? Uh, mm. It's hard for me to trust the police, the biggest thing being a woman of colour. Do you think that police can be salvaged? <sighs> when you said racist, rapists, murderers, paedophiles, you don't mean the prisoners or people who get arrested, you mean the policemen themselves? Yes, I mean other police officers. Wow. Were you an officer? What was your role within the Met? I had various roles. I was a uniformed police officer, I was a detective. I was in the Met Police for over a decade. I left the police around five years ago. What made you want to become an officer? I think it's going to sound quite cliched, but as a very young person, I genuinely wanted to help. I think people who join now probably go into it a lot more with their eyes open. Was there anybody at the time that you suspected of corruption or even illegal activity? What, what I always found, and, and this is, doesn't surprise me, is that the people who went on to commit murder, who were later caught in possession of child pornography, who later went on to and probably were committing sexual offences at the time when I knew them, I don't think anyone suspected anything. I was at the police station at the same time with David Carrick. There was never any gossip or rumours or anything to suggest what sexual offences he was committing outside of work. How does it make you feel knowing that you've worked in the same spaces and been around people that are capable of that when they're supposed to have a duty of care for the public? It makes you think that surely someone knew something, someone who worked with him closely would have been aware of some of those behaviours or comments that he made. No one is that good at hiding the large part of himself. There was a senior officer who was always very good to me. He was later convicted for a double murder. What? As someone who became a detective, not being able to identify those people is quite scary. Were you really not aware? Like, you, did you genuinely have no idea? I guess the point is that you don't know what anyone's capable of. Yeah, completely. Which is fair. What sort of wrongdoings did you observe? I remember one officer telling me that they went to a suicide. It was someone who hanged themselves and they took a selfie. Are you joking? Mm. Oh my goodness. What was the kind of corruption that you were seeing? When I say corruption, I think mostly incompetence. Okay. And sometimes willful incompetence. It's much more evidence has been misplaced because it's put in a storage room that's just a complete shambles. Right. Things get lost and got lost. Were there any cases where you saw police officers tamper with the evidence? There was a team of detectives known as a crime squad who would deal with things like drug issues in the area, robberies, burglaries, things like that. A lot of them had been arrested because they'd been conducting searches at people's houses and then keeping or using some of the items that have been seized from that, not storing it in evidence correctly. What sort of items were they? Electronic items, cars, things like that. So f***ing oh, I don't know. I can... Sorry, it's just, yeah, that's crazy. Were you ever offered anything like drink or drugs or anything like that by other officers? On duty? Yeah. Uh, mm, not drugs, no. There was an example of a culture when I was a young detective where you'd have what was called office lunches that were essentially boozy celebrations with food at some point, but they'd start in the day, they'd start. But we used to be on duty. They'd start technically, yes, on duty. Yeah. I would say there are people who turn up for work intoxicated. Yeah. And have done an ice melt alcohol on people, whether that's because they had a drink problem or whether that's just because they went out the night before, but they would then be driving police cars. I remember a female officer making a complaint that a senior male officer had inappropriately touched her, put her hand up under her skirt. That's a nice senior man. a senior female officer then took her aside and persuaded her not to make any allegation as it would be good. A senior female officer. As it would be good for her career. Did I hear that right? Yeah, it's yeah. the female part. It's like how are women not supporting other women? Mm.
Am I hearing this right? Mm. Are you serious? Yeah. I'd expect it from a male officer, no offense, but not a female. I don't know, I would actually. Because really? I think it's harder for females and the police, so you kind of, you know, yeah, you, you have support? to do what you gotta do. I think that's wrong, but I think she has been groomed by the culture. What was your superintendents doing? What was your sergeants, the well, hierarchy, like how, how were they handling you officers? Well again, I mean when I was a, a very young police officer you'd get sent out on your own in the morning and you were told not to come back until you either got five tickets for someone not wearing a seatbelt or you've stopped to search five people and wow. don't, you know, don't come back until you've done that. There will be a cash prize or a, a gift voucher every month given to the police officer with the most arrests or most tickets. It's just Crazy. so wrong, isn't it? It's almost like you're not trying to protect. It's almost like you're actively seeking people. It's like to a sales role. Arrest. It's sounding like a sales mm. role. Like you're being yeah. incentivized. Yeah. yeah. Do you trust the police now, and can we trust them more as civilians? Yes, you can trust the police, or you can trust police officers, but you should always take some personal responsibility and make sure you're safe. And if someone did say they were a police officer, if you don't need to get in the car with them, don't get in the car with them. If you need to go somewhere with police officers, even if they're in uniform, make sure someone knows where you're going and when you'll be back. So it's all about reducing the risk to yourself. Can you give me a, an example of some of the racism that you saw throughout your time at the Met? It would be more kind of stereotyping and um, but in what sense? Comments. Like, give me an example. Let, let's stop them, they're up to no good when they're obviously not doing anything, they're just standing there talking. Okay, and most of the time would you say that these situations tended to happen towards black boys? I mean, statistically speaking, young black males get stopped and searched more often than, yeah. than any other group, so yeah. What's your opinion on that? It's, it's, diff it's a difficult one. If you're looking at it from a purely statistical perspective, mm -hmm then young black males are known to carry weapons more than some other groups. My issue with it is that the police aren't looking at why that might be the case and the socioeconomic situation that, that they're in. Do you not think that it's quite a bold thing to say that statistically young black males are the ones to carry lives more because that's actually that data is being provided by an institution that's already notoriously racist. I, I, I see what you're trying to say. I don't think there's. I don't think I have the answer. Why didn't you report more of the bad behaviours? I think as a young police officer who is working alongside older, more experienced people, you do feel like you're opinion isn't as valued and isn't you're not going to be heard and that there's only going to be negative repercussions for you and your career if you ever spoke out against something. Was there anything at all to sort of check your mental state or anything like that before joining? I went through a higher standard of vetting when I went to a specialist unit but that was much more focused on whether you'd be vulnerable to being blackmailed. I think what has happened in the last few years, the, the Wayne Cousins and the David Carricks of this world, I think that has emphasised even more that vetting needs to include personality tests and psychometric tests that evaluate people's opinions on, on things like race and gender. Do you think that's something that is going to happen? I don't know. I hope it does. What was the dynamics like in the workplace environment? The first thing that comes to mind was stressful. Mm -hmm. There was always that overriding sense of not being able to investigate crimes as effectively as you should be doing because you haven't got the time or the resources. I think any police officer will tell you they never feel like they're truly off duty. You have a responsibility, you have a duty of care towards the members of the public. It can create a lot of tension, a lot of stress and a lot of emotional trauma. If you do something that's really like traumatic or just obviously like horrific, that psychological help, is that something that is offered more so? When I was very young, I went to an extremely stressful situation that I wasn't really offered any support or counselling and, and to this day, it kind of still affects me. Yeah. It was a, a cot death. I think I'd been in the police for about three months and I had to examine the, the baby for any wounds or any suspicious marks and then stay with the baby until he was assessed by a doctor. The only thing that was kind of said to me by a sergeant on one occasion immediately afterwards 
do you want to talk to me about it? And at the time, as a young officer, I thought I needed to be brave and, and tough. And I said, no, thank you. And nothing, no, nothing more was ever said about it. Which is horrific, because how can you get on and do jobs like that? It makes you think that you can make people more cynical and more... Do you know what I mean? You almost feel like you're building these characters and these like psyches for people to almost become the worst version of themselves because there's no help. And that's, that's a big part of why I think the police needs such a thorough review in the sense of, you're right, they do become cynical, it does become dark because all you're dealing with day in, day out are horrific things. Is there anything you're particularly proud of from your time in the police? <laughs> I don't think... I know I made my parents proud by joining. I can't think of a moment that I feel proud of because... Oh, that's sad. Well, you, I mean, remember what, what, what you're doing. You, if you're arresting someone, you're taking away their freedom. Whether they deserve it or not, that's not actually for you to decide. You make a decision, you do that, you follow the evidence. A good result for a detective is you win a case at court and that person goes to jail. Well, that doesn't make me feel proud. Yeah. Um, it doesn't, even if you've saved someone's life or prevented them from being raped or murdered. I'm, I'm glad I was able to do that, mm. but often that doesn't help the victim. Do you think that police can be salvaged? Or is it something that you think needs to be um, dismantled and rebuilt? I think it can be salvaged, but it would have to be restructured a hell of a lot additional resources, the right resources and the right people in place to enact them. The right training, the right support and the right people being given the opportunities as well. I just don't think they're anywhere near being what they need to be. As someone that was scared and in a situation where I needed the police, I now have quite a positive personal experience with it. but. I don't think that anything can discredit some of the bad things that have happened. I completely agree. It's, it's the type of job that you can't just have a few bad apples and, and that's okay. It's, exactly. That's not good enough. The Black Lives Matter movement that has taught me that a lot of people can't trust the police. So even if I can trust the police, if my black friends can't trust the police, then what does it really matter that I, I can? It still doesn't, it doesn't really fill me with confidence. It's interesting because I want to be able to trust the police because I agree with Holly and I think, you know, the majority do an amazing job. We would be in anarchy without them. But it's hard for me to trust the police and obviously the biggest thing being a woman of colour, a black woman at that, the damage has already been done. So it would take a lot of time and change and development. Upon reflection, do you have any regrets? I'm glad I joined the police and I'm glad I left the police. It's a period of my life that whilst I might not be proud of, it's taught me a lot. Do you think you'd be able to speak as openly about this without the mask? Certain aspects not as comfortable with when we're talking about specific people I may have worked with or stories that I may have told, but the general discussion about what I think would make the police better, I'm certainly not the only one saying that. So what do you guys think of that? Interesting. I found it refreshing that you got to actually hear the perspective of a police officer. I think it's good that he was open about like his experiences. I definitely think that he's sort of being, um, you know, he's being held accountable for it, you know. He's not trying to just sort of brush it under the carpet and say, you know, this actually isn't okay, that's why I left. So I have a lot yeah. more respect for that.